Hi, everyone. Hello. Adesh, I am audible. Yes, sir. Very much audible. Yes. You have the practice of uh, role players renaming themselves with uh, uh, good evening, prefix, everybody. Prefix of their roles. Uh, hi, Kostu. Good evening. How are you? Hey, Mayor. I'm good. Thanks. I, I just want to convey one thing to you. Uh, my speech is mentioned in the project is 5 to 7 minutes, but I went to 12 minutes. Uh, so I'll, I'm giving one of the HPL project speech. Okay. So I have a speech title. Mayur, your speech title uh, I need. I'll just message you over WhatsApp. No, uh, just chat box, sir. Okay, I'll just put it in the chat box. Others, could you give me a course? Yes, That's my, I'll give it to You have started recording already. Um, it is Shushma. Put it off later. It's all right. It won't be a problem. Brian, for joining us. On festive and joyous, beautiful occasion, blissful occasion of harvest festival of Pongal, Makar Sankranti, Bihu, Roli, I, Milin Kulapkar. Sergeant of Arms, welcome you all to the enchanting festive meeting number 648 of our club, number 1254332, Area 1 of Division B of District 92. Yes, your own speech weavers, Toastmasters, Bangalore Club. Toastmasters Club's mission is to blow up. Leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Toastmasters have helped people from diverse backgrounds to become more confident communicator and leader. I request you all to uphold the grand cardinal principle of every Toastmasters meeting. Keep your audio microphone muted at all times, except when you are invited to speak. Keep your video on at all times, unless you are moving in and out of the, of the room as an encouragement to early role takers and speakers, make sure to applaud them virtually. Role takers and speakers will consciously refrain from expressing their views on sex, politics, and religion to ensure the sentiments of audience are not heard. Toastmasters and guests, farmers celebrate the harvest festival of Makar Sankranti, Bihu, Pongal, because they rightly sow the right seed at the beginning. And that's why they get a fantastic, fabulous harvest. And hence, they are 
able to celebrate Maka Sankranti, Bihu, Pongal, the Harvest Festival. Today, our club president has done the right thing, the same thing, all for the last 84 summers, winters, and rainy seasons. He has been sowing the right seed year after year after year. And that's why he's able to reap the rich harvest. So let us hear from him, our club president, Toastmaster Joseph, how he is going to celebrate his festival and give us a good harvest. Over to the club president, Toastmaster Joseph Benedict. Thank you, Milanji, for your wonderful introduction to me. I declare 648 meeting to order. But as this is my first speech, I wish everyone a very happy new year and prosperous and healthy new year. I believe you're all taking good care of yourselves because of the surging Omicron, which is spearheading like a wildfire. Therefore, you have to take your vaccines, complete your two doses, and try to be healthy because it is mandatory, and observe all the COVID SOPs, and maintain distance during your celebration when and whenever you are outside. One of my alumni called me, sir, you don't take the second dose because somebody has made a big consequence of reaction and all. I said, Lord is my strength. Therefore, I went and took my second dose also. It is the responsibility of every citizen that the nation goes into good health. So take your vaccines without fail. Now, coming to two days before, the India celebrated the National Youth Day. The future of nation depends upon the youth of the country. So best wishes of National Youth Day to the young brains and minds of our nation. Every year, the government of India decides the theme of National Youth Day, which is different from the previous one and purely based on the teachings of Swami Vivekananda. This year, the theme for National Youth Day 2002 is, is all in the mind, which is a key teaching of Swami Vivekananda. It was in the year 1985, government of India declared that Swami Vivekananda birthday will be observed as National Youth Day and to commemorate the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda every year. <laughs> he was born in 12th January, 1863, that is 159th birth anniversary. The National Youth Day is observed all over India at schools and colleges with procession speeches, music, youth conventions, and several other programs, yoga asanas, presentations, competitions, and essay writing, and so on. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, all these have become a muted celebration. The power of youth is commonwealth for the entire world. The focus of young people are the faces of past and present and our future. No seg segment is the society can match with the power of idealism, enthusiasm, and courage of the young people. Now we have 
followed by today a very beautiful celebration which our village has already pointed you out one of the major festivals celebrated with much pomp in india and it is dedicated to the sun god the festival is considered as most auspicious occasion and is aligned with solar cycle generally all festivals in major religions are always followed by lunar cycle but this particular festival is of solar cycle it also marks the beginning of harvest season where people worship new crops and share with the delight thousands of years ago the quote from sant says love and faithfulness will meet righteousness and peace will embrace man's loyalty will reach up from the earth and god's righteousness will come down from heaven the lord will make a prosperous and our land will produce rich harvest and good how synonymous is this even today we have a because of this pandemic all these festivals are celebrated in a very low profile because of the seriousness of the virus that is spreading now it is time for me to introduce a joke master in our midst to keep us entertaining with her jokes by profession she has a business in dealing solar panels her hobby is socializing i believe people who do socializing always talk very full of uh, fun and jokes so please join me in welcoming the joke master vandana bagheria over to you toast master vandana bagheria good evening presiding officer toast master joseph fellow toast masters it gives me immense pleasure and i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to toast master adarsh for giving me the opportunity to play the role of joke master in your club once an old man was traveling to delhi he boarded the flight and sat on the window seat suddenly an old lady arrived claiming that window seat is her but the old man denied to ship he was vehement sit in the uh, window seat air hostess also came and requested that old man to shift as his boarding pass has the aisle old man stubbornly denied to ship then the air hostess had to call captain crew and explain him everything the captain crew came and whispered something in the to the old man and the old man immediately shifted to the aisle seat all the passengers and air hostess were surprisingly asked the captain what he had whispered that made that old man to shift immediately the captain said he just said to the old man that only aisle seat is going to delhi rest of the seat were going to jaipur thank you over to you that was a wonderful presentation uh, vandana sri so really, uh, kudos to you let us make an applause for that joke now i will be introducing the toast master of the day i am the toast master of the day today because of some urgent uh, withdrawal of somebody who is uh, uh, was not in good health or something like that the team the new year resolution usually we make resolution only to break it it is because the new year resolutions are 
just in the mindset and the behavior and the willpower of a person. It doesn't last long, even though he makes a determination. Our habits always changes. Some people will say, let us eat less, or we will not eat the sweet, or we will get up in the morning and walk and uh, make ourselves a fitness uh, program. But this phases out as soon as January ends, and we are back again to the old habits. In this regard, there is one person, he's a philanthropist. Last week also we spoke about him. He is no other than Chetan Bhagat. He gave his opinion of a New Year resolution that develop fresh mindset, get towards change. So what should India resolve to do? What new mindset do we need as individuals and as a country. He's, I was very impressed by his suggestions. It's really a very impressive and uh, uh, welcoming uh, measures that to, what we have to do. He suggests improve our health. You know, in this pandemic, we have to keep our body immune system strong, no matter whatever it is, and take our vaccines and in if possible booster and always try to become, uh, live in a healthy habits like eating healthy food, avoiding all unhealthy foods. In the second one, align your work with your interest. Supposing you are, most of our days are spent in work. Sometimes you are disgusted. So what he says is that try to exit from that one and see that you come up with some new resolutions. You change your work habit or change the course of the work and so on and so forth. The third one is save and invest your money. You know, Indians, they are all very show off and they always spend money. Sometimes they deposit in the bank, which gives you more interest also. What he suggests is not only that one, in order to the growth of the nation, you have to invest in mutual funds and marketing and so on and so forth. Make yourself the priority. The Indian culture values families and community. We cherish living for each other. Well, that is a great live life for yourselves. The next one is do not drop mine. You know, People always carried away by doing certain things like social media, video games, alcohol, sex, drugs, scrolling social media. All these release dopamine in our brain. And we are falling addicted to that one. Only through productive activities that leads self-development. So you have to avoid and change your propositions. Build your nation and community. India is a diverse nation. In one beautiful country, we can enjoy multiple cuisines, cultures, and festivals. We must all work hard to pursue this diversity in our nation in order to have a peaceful life. These resolutions should change one's life 
and spread positivity in this new year of 2022. Now let me give the inception of the Toastmaster International. Toastmaster International is a non-profit educational organization that operates club worldwide for the purpose of helping members improve their communication and public speaking skills. It was founded by the great legend, Ralph C. Smedley, on October 20, 1924, that was almost 90,000 years ago, at the YMCA, Santa Ana, California, United States. Toastmasters International platform has today 300 million members, 15,800 clubs in 149 countries, that has produced more confident speakers and leaders because of their participation in Toastmasters. As usual, our session will have three phases. First one will be a pre prepared speech, and the second session will be the table topic, and the third session will be the evaluation, which is very important for evaluating because this is the only opportunity is given in this Toastmaster platform and nowhere else. Thereby you can bring yourself in up-to-date requirement of your public speaking and communication skills. It is now time to introduce the general evaluator. Toastmaster Kustav Raghavantaran. He is International Technology Operation at Scholastic. His office is Gardening Arts and Crafts Literature. Please join me in welcoming our Toastmaster Kastup Raghavendran. Over to you, Toastmaster Kastup Raghavendran. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm the general evaluator for today. My responsibility is to observe the meeting from start to finish and present a report on what we did well and what we can do better. To help me in this task, I have a team of four members whom I'll introduce now. The speeches will have their own individual evaluators whom we will meet as the speech comes. Sir. So starting with my team, the first person I would like to introduce is Toastmaster Pulkit, who is playing the role of the timer. Uh, Toastmaster Pulkit, please explain your role. Thank you, Toastmaster Kostov. Good evening, everyone. Today, I will be your timer in the meeting. I will help you in time management by changing my background with different colors. For speaker, the timing is five to seven minutes. So I will change my background to green at five minutes. At six minutes, I will change it to yellow. And at seven minutes, I will change it to red. For table topics, the timing is one to two minutes. So I will uh, change my background to green at one minute. At one and a half minute, I will change it to yellow. And at two minutes, I will change it to red. Extra 30 second grace period will be provided. I will prepare my report and I will at the and I will present it at the end once I am called upon. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Kostu. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Bulke. Well done. Let's move on to meet the next team member. Uh, playing the accounter's role is Toastmaster Adarsh. Please explain your role. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Kostov. So let's say that you're in a scenario where you're supposed to tell someone where they're supposed to go. You're supposed to provide directions to someone. And you go, you know what, um, um, uh, take a left, uh, then um, take a right, then um, uh, go straight. You're just lost, aren't you? the person didn't get what you were trying to tell exactly. But instead, if you went and told, hey, take a left, then take a right, then go straight, you'll find the place right there. If you told this, don't you think the person would be able to understand it better? Now that's exactly what we at Toastmasters are looking to achieve. We're trying to refine our speech by removing crutch words like ah, um, you know, so, and so on. There are many crutch words that I'm going to spot today during the course of the meet, and I'll present my report towards the end. So make sure to introduce sufficient pauses in your speech so that you can escape my wrath as the counter. Thank you, and back to you, Toastmaster. 
Thank you, Toastmaster Ardhus. Nicely done. Let's move on to meet the third member on my team, Toastmaster Rohita, who is playing the role of the Grammarian. Please introduce your role. Very good evening to all the fellow Toastmasters here today. So it's a pleasure to play the role of the Grammarian, where my responsibility would be to, play, to pay close attention to the use of the English language, to any enriched words, proverbs, and uh, the quotations and the figures of speech that would be used by speakers or any of our role takers or guests today. And I will also pay close attention to any incorrect use of the English language or I would also be able to suggest if there is any improvement needed in pronunciation. And uh, my role as a grammarian also is to introduce the word of the day. The word of the day today is vehement. Vehement means to show strong feeling to be forceful, passionate, or intense. So when you use vehement as an adjective, you could say her voice was low, but vehement. When you'd like to use it as an adverb, we can say if you do something vehemently, then you do it forcefully with emotion. To go with today's theme, I've made a sentence myself. This new year, I have decided to vehemently pursue my resolutions. So I encourage everyone to use the word of the day today, requirement. I've also put it up in the chat and wishing a wonderful meeting to everyone. Thank you, Arun Job there, using the word with the team of today. And to meet last team, uh, Toastmaster Sushma, who's playing the role of the listener. Please explain your role. Good evening, everyone. I wish you all happy Makara Sankranti. Today, I'm going to play the role of listener. As a listener, my role is paying close attention to all the speakers and role takers and make a note of few interesting facts and tidbits of information. At the end of the session, I would uh, ask few questions to know whether you, are, you all are attentive or not. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you very much. That is my immediate team. And we will be back towards the end of the meeting to present our report. Back to the postmaster of today, Joe Sponster Felix. Thank you so much, the General Evaluator. Now I call upon the first speaker evaluator to, to read the object of this speech of the first speaker. Over to you. Uh, I believe it's too smart. DTM too smart. Party over to you. Good evening, everybody. Toastmaster Mayur is attempting to deliver his high-performance second speech from the path of dynamic leadership. The project purpose for the member is to apply his leadership and planning knowledge to develop a project plan, organize a guidance committee, and implement the plan with the help of the team. The second speech purpose is for the member is to share some aspect of his experience. Completing the project, the time length is 10 to 12 minutes and not five to seven minutes. All the best Toastmaster Mayur on your landmark speech. Back to the Toastmaster of the day. Thank you Toastmaster Patti. A senior business manager by profession for a IT and tele service company, a triple crown winner and immediate past president. He continues to be a treasurer in our XCOM team. His hobby is a fitness environment enthusiast, cyclist, and reading books and also swimming. His passion for stock market by spending some of his time regularly. He's going to speak on the pathway persuades influence in the level high performance leadership, level five. 
The speech title is My Toastmaster Leadership. Please join me in welcoming Toastmaster Mayur. Over to you, Toastmaster Mayur. Thank you so much, Joseph, sir. First, I would like to share my screen with everybody. Okay. So. Hope you can see my screen. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster and guest. So today I'm going to present my Toastmaster Leadership Chandri from the High Performance Leadership Project. And the reason I choose this project is because I choose my presidency at the club as a my high performance leadership project. So every leadership journey, journey, each one of us has to take our own path and get where, get there on our own way. This is quoted by David Gregan. So whenever, uh, when I start, I started my leadership journey, not last term, it is st started since in 2020, 20 after, just be before our pandemic started. So when I joined the club in February, uh, 2020, and in 2020, uh, that time I attended just one or two meeting offline. And uh, after some time I had, to take a responsibility of vice president membership. Then I took vi mem uh, responsibility of vi pre vice president education. So that's how my leadership journey start in Toastmaster. And to begin with the journey of president role, there are a few things we have to keep in mind. First, we have to identify plan and action, and we have to think about our vision and takeaways as well. So let's talk about plans. So to start uh, uh, with a club as a president, and you have to have some purpose within yourself. And also you have to think about how you want to take your club to the next level. And you have to give directions to your executive teams and prepare your club success plan, what you are going to do for the next six months. And Think, think about and discuss and with your team member and your club member what you are going to do for the next term. And also after that, once all these things done, you can get trained by Toastmaster International District 92 always do the training for the members and of the executive team. So get attend the training, learn from there and apply those uh, learnings in the your meetings or your club. After that, there are certain obstacles you might uh, face in your regular meetings or in your clubs. So suppose a member is not ready to give his speech or suddenly cancel his speech, so reach out to them one-to-one -one and resolve their queries, why they are not able to take up that role or why they are not taking that particular role. Suppose a certain time what happened is, uh, for example, if I, uh, in the start, I, I am taking only one or two uh, small, small roles like tech team or listener roles. And I, 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 I refuse to take other roles as well. So what, what we can do is we have to motivate that member particularly step by step and groom them to take up the bigger, bigger roles, take, challenge them and understand them as well what they are capable of. And then one by one, you have to give them, give them big roles as well. And so what you can do is uh, also, you can plan your task or event in the, in the advanced and for specifically events, you have to think about in reaching out. Suppose if I have to bring any international speaker from winners or something. So I have to plan ahead in three, four months in advance because I was approaching, uh, I'll tell you one example of approaching one person. 
so uh, and this was still in process right so i'll tell you that how this person behaves so when i reached out to her she told me that okay i'll i will be able to for example i'm saying i will be able to give um, uh, presentation on february first week when i reached out to her uh, january end so she will be telling okay i got book uh, i booked my date so it's not possible for me to give the speech on first week of january february right so you have to uh, think about in that manner that you have your substitutes as well because uh, if you completely depend on certain thing so you you will be in a mess and engage with your executive team on monthly uh, basis and resolve your members query regularly as well what uh, you can also do to improvise things in the club particularly reach out to your area director division director and district official whenever you feel that you are stuck somewhere and you don't have answer so reach out to them or any uh, professional any any experienced person if you think they can help you and guide you for uh, doing the particular task next i would like to tell you about vision and takes away you have to have a clear sense of purpose why you want to go ahead with particular event or meeting how it going to be beneficial for the member and guest suppose uh, you are uh, bringing variety of in the meeting so it will be connecting uh, lot of audiences as well so, and uh, suppose you are doing only single kind of uh, routine meetings or uh, i would say uh, similar meetings so it will feel bored by everybody and people won't come to the meeting so identify a diversity in the meetings and different topic you can select be open to uh, take feedback from the members what you can do uh, share the, them with one feedback form with the member or your mentor or your mentees that uh, different kind of form you can use to get the feedback or uh, receive the feedback that way you can build a relationship with the member and your executive team as well <laughs> recognize we have this we, just, we don't have to just limit ourselves to all these things also we have to recognize the member contribution what they are doing in particular in a month by awarding them toastmaster of the month by recognizing uh, by publishing the poster of level completion celebrate their birthdays assist them in a club championship if you can or uh, identify a mentor <coughs> mentor for competitions like club area or division or district level if they are going there consider uh, other sub ideas and perspective as well so what you can do is suppose uh, if you are uh, going to take uh, this meeting and uh, certain uh, things happen that you uh, like somebody not able to attend the meeting in at last moment <coughs> sorry at last moment you have to identify a new role taker so this kind of challenges will come in a regular meeting as well so you have to take the new initiative as well for that and you have to keep your club member and your team always motivated you can utilize i would like to tell uh, that uh, members just not only rest, uh, restrict yourself to a uh, executive team or uh, just your mentor you can uh, utilize toastmaster international website it has lot of resources or you can also reach out to um, members on social media so they are always happy to help you now i would like to tell you about how we started so this is the team uh, we, we were in last term we knew we knew to cup the vp education role others to cup uh, uh, vp membership role and akash was doing vp pr role so these three people in the start they were started with a good good energy and i was really impressed but after some time what happens certain people felt the stress or 
they they were not able to uh, go ahead fully so certain time i have to help them or certain time they were helping me i was really impressed with the others and uh, akash um, by doing the vp membership and uh, akash others was doing vp membership so he was regularly le- reaching out to the guest for getting the new members and akash, uh, akash was doing excellent in his uh, pr skills you can see the poster created all by him only and vandana was doing uh, secretary role but she was not able to continue after 3 months so we have to change that and uh, nitin took up the uh, sec- uh, secretary role after that uh, uh, varsha was doing the treasurer role in the starting for 3 months then we have to change again for her work reason and uh, family reasons and i have to take up the treasurer role so and Nit- sushma bidhu bidhu uh, sushma was taking sa role and bidhu was associating the uh, uh, vppr for vppr and we were helped by our immediate past president that time tosmaso deepa so these um, you can see here as well that we face lot of challenges in doing our things as, in executive team as well so be open to challenges always any uh, tomorrow we don't know what will happen with the executive team so you have to be ready to take challenges always so we started with our first theme of uh, of the month in july second july what's the plan so it was we discussed our uh, theme uh, what we are going to do and simultaneously we organized our first executive m- meeting as well and we were installed by toastmaster rajesh our era director i would like to show you some of the event organized by us in the last term so this event uh, particularly organized by some uh, uh, fantastic speakers and uh, members as well so the table topic on olympic was organized by toastmaster deepa in the th- second or third week of the july <coughs> then i bring lindy mclean she was the second runner up in toastmaster world championship of public speaking in 2020 and she delivered a keynote speech on how to be a be an ace at virtual speaking i think uh, toastmaster pragya is also there in in the audience she delivered a open house session for helping the turning the table by and with her speech it was really it was really helpful to understand us uh, how can we prepare for the table topic for the contest and uh, our second speaker was kursi gotuaku who helped us in evaluations these were the non, not just this three event we had certain more events we conducted a debate a speech marathon and at last we were able to conduct a panel discussion with the legends of uh, toastmaster we had gauri shashadri dtm bhupati sir and our own club dtm milin sir and this is the dcp report we had on 31st of december we made almost eight goals and we have completed almost all the uh, goal on education membership we were a little bit late here and we have to focus on our membership in this term particularly so this was our dcp program uh, report overall for the last 6 month and this after that i would like to share our special meeting these are the different various variety of meetings you can see here the different uh, toastmaster of the day throughout the, this 6 six, six month we have we were able to organize you can see the misfit and by bidhu and other club members who took up the 2m od roles and these were the some more images of the toastmaster meeting regularly we were doing and at last i was able to um, conduct one meeting on th- 31st december it was a good meeting because it was on a 31st and i had to close my term as well and i would like to 
tell about the leadership it's not about what you are learning it's what we are going to give to the others that's how leadership works in my opinion and you have to always be open to change and set your priorities listen to others idea as well if it can benefit for the club and use it if you feel stuck somewhere take suggestion of uh, your superiors or whoever uh, it can be a uh, younger person as well or it could be a older person so don't hesitate to take opinions of the others so as nelson mandela quoted is always seems in, impossible until it's done so it was a roller coaster ride for me for uh, handling the club last term and <clears throat> to help me in this project particularly i was helped by uh, Toastmaster Deepa, DTM Milin, Toastmaster Shubhadeep, Toastmaster Srinu Babu, and our area director Rajesh. My I was also helped by regularly by our executive team and my club members as well. With that, I would like to hand it over back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. That was a long narration and a wonderful experience of our Toastmaster. Mayur was the past president. He has given you a very clear-cut uh, ideas and opinions that he has uh, followed through the members joining with him. Let us give a great applause for this achievement of Toastmaster Mayur. As there is only one speaker, we will straight away go to a very interesting session, that is table topic. The table topic, our, our table topic master is a new member of this club. A young mind with a qualification of MBA and PhD in management. She is looking for a research-oriented job, currently planning for a startup. Her hobbies include interact with people, watch culinary show with an inter inter intern to develop healthy and heating habits. Reading articles pertaining to health related to keep fit for herself as well as her family. Please join me in welcoming our table topic master, Toastmaster Smita. Over to you, Toastmaster Smita. Thank you so much, TMOD, for such a nice introduction. Good evening, uh, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. As uh, uh, I'm going to play, uh, uh, going to play the role of table topic. As we all know that it develops. Uh, the skill of impromptu speaking, as well as it, it trains us to express our feeling in a systematic way. So with this view, I want to start my uh, table topic uh, uh, role. So uh, for that, uh, each one of the participant is required to speak for one to two minutes. Timer will take care of the time as uh, 30 minutes, 30 second grace period will be given to each and every participants and uh, guests can also participate if, he, if they want. So let us start. Uh, who will be the vol volunteer uh, for that? Can you please uh, raise up your hand? Manish, okay, so uh, one second, uh, I would like to correct uh, Smita. Mostly you have to take the guest into consideration and they do not take the people who have taken already the roles of the Toastmasters. Thank you. Okay, okay. Manish will take one as volunteer. Okay, Manish, are you ready? Yes, please. Okay, okay. So, do you believe that something is better than nothing can stop you to kill your new year resolution. I am repeating. Do you believe that something is better than nothing 
can stop you to kill your new year resolution over to you munish good evening everybody do i think something is better than nothing to kill my new year resolution in our life if we don't get anything but we if we get something we have to be content in life it's not possible that we should be after everything that we should we need this we need this we need this will we we'll never be contentful there is always we have to think that people those who are beneath us then only we can be happy that will help us for our new year resolution if we are into business we can make as much money as we can but we can't become imani we will not keep on thinking that this man is rich than richer than us this person is less than us we can't compare somewhere in life we should think god has given us something see the people those who have nothing then life becomes beautiful otherwise you will always have a sleepless night you will keep on thinking that god i do not have this thing i do not have this thing so if i think that in my profession there are people those who are thousand times better than me but still i am in that profession i am somewhere i am able to survive with my family i am able to feed at the time of covid some of the people they do not have two meals a day that can only make my life happy and then only we can enjoy our life otherwise we'll keep on cribbing for every year when there and there that our life is hell 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 to be content we have to be happy whatever we have maybe that is something thank you out to the toastmaster please thank you so much munish for expressing your views who will be the next volunteer who is okay so next topic goes to uh, guest brian edwards share your one unreasonable expectations with yourself that killed your new year resolution share your one unreasonable expectation with yourself that killed your new year resolution over to you brian edwards table talking master fellow toss masters thank you for asking me this question i'm a bit jurastic in my thinking regarding revolutions and a bit unorthodox and i recall some years ago we were talking about resolutions in the group that i belong to and one fella on a very humorous note he said my resolution this year is to give up making resolutions as your president very eminently and vehemently pointed out that people tend to break resolutions very quickly after the 31st of January i think i must go along with that idea people sort of think that oh come the 31st of december or the 1st of january i'm going to vehemently make resolutions to do this do that do the other what about the other 364 days of the year do we care for our people around us do we sort of give to charity do we resolve to be decent people or is it only on the 1st of january that we've got to sort of say hey i'm going to do this i'm going to do that going to the other so for me as i said to you earlier on 
I'm fairly juristic in my thinking about resolutions. I try to sort of carry on trying to be happy, trying to be healthy, trying to fit into society and go along just being a decent person. So I'm not one of these people who sort of 31st of December or 1st of January say, I'm going to resolve to do this. If something comes along in my mind or somebody needs a helping hand, I would just try to help out. And I would do this without having to resolve to do anything. So back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you so much, Brian Edward, for telling us that only 31st December is not, not uh, the day to uh, take resolution. This is today, we can also take the resolution and we can follow that. Thank you so much. The next, who is volunteer for the next topic? Can I volunteer? Okay, uh, DTM. Pat. Okay, okay. Can be practical and be more realistic be the mantra, mantra to stick with new year resolution? Can be practical and to be more realistic be the mantra to stick with no new resolution? Over to you, evaluator DTM. Mantra and stick with the resolution. What is that mantra? Uh, am I smart? Table topics master. Do I look smart? Can I have your response? Or can I have a response from any other member? Okay, thumbs up. Thumbs up favors my expectation. Yeah, I'm smart. Favors my expectation that I'm smart. Just because I'm a Toastmaster, I'm smarter. And since I'm in the midst of a variety of smart people, my smartness increases. We have that you know, popular comparison, smart, smarter, smartest. Yes. What is that realism? What is the practicality of taking a New Year resolution and sticking to that? Here comes the smart. Most of us, most of us are popular with the goal setting. Uh, uh, you can call it classification, category, or a formula where each letter represents one particular attribute. S stands for specific, M stands for measurable, that is trackable, A stands for achievable, R stands for realistic or rational, I call it rational, then T stands for time bound or trackable. Since I'm smart, I do make New Year resolution year after year, but I am very conscious, I'm quite aware of what I'm doing. Thereby I'm able to stick to that resolution. I always keep smart goals. Year before last year, one smart goal I kept, uh, of all my strengths, like prepared speeches, stable topics, evaluation, eva evaluation criteria, then I decided to become the district, the champ of evaluation contest. I came up to division I won. The pandemic started. Then the headquarters allowed only international speech contest to be conducted. The other three canceled. So my smartness continues. I think this year I will definitely become a district champ in evaluation. This is what realism and practicality. Back to your table topics, master. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Patil. Who is next volunteer? If you allow me, I am there. Okay, uh, Milin sir, next topic goes to you. That is, what does it mean to you? Slow and steady wins the race. What do you mean to you? Slow and steady wins the race. Over to you, Milin, sir. Uh, 
if you tell this slow and steady win the race, you can tell everyone, but not to one person. Our Indian cricket, we, wicket player, wicketer, the wicket keeper, Vishak Pan, he never believes in slow and steady wins the race. He goes away from the first ball and most of the time he succeeds like what he did yesterday. He did 100 when the, out of the Indian team of 198 runs only. He made 100 not out. With so many sixes and so many fours. So this slow and steady is okay for a person who is running a marathon. But even now, the marathon runners also, the pace at which they are running, they are targeting to finish the 42 kilometer within two hours. One of them had already done. So the, when you have to run at that pace, at that pace, it's almost like a sprinting from start to end. Because in this world, in the fast paced world, there is nothing called slow. Rush, finish, yeah. All that you have to do, whenever you are rushing, you have to be right and correct. So you learn the technique of being very perfect in whatever you do. And you can rush to the way, the F1 formula drivers do it. They rush and they make sure they don't make mistakes. So they're trained for that be perfect from day one, fast from day one. So that's what they say. Fast and furious is the mantra. Because there are, even in war, the person who attacks first captures 90 times of the wins. So that is the beauty. So slow and steady is an old adage, may be followed in certain times, but no more. It has to be fast and perfect for the first time. Over to the Tamil Topic Master. Thank you so much, Milin, sir, for telling us that slow and steady wins the race, wins the race has become older. So now we'll have to be more fast. Thank you so much. Who is the uh, next volunteer? Smitha, I can probably give it to Sushma. Okay. Oh, Master Shushma, are you ready? Okay. How do you think that rewarding yourself will stop you to slip up from your resolution? I'm repeating again. How do you think that rewarding yourself will stop you to slip up from your resolution? Over to you, Toastmaster Sushma. Thank you, Toastmaster Smitha. So, rewarding myself, slip, slip. Can I can I ask you that? What was the word you have mentioned? Slip. Yes. Okay, that means uh, rewarding yourself will slip. Will stop you to slip from your New Year resolution. Means how rewarding yourself will help you to stick with the New Year resolution. Okay. So I always believe in self-motivation and I tried many times whenever the new year comes or new year is approaching, okay, let me make resolutions, let me stick to that. As someone mentioned while um, delivering the table topics, it um, doesn't happen practically. Maybe few months we stick to that and again we would break. So Self-motivation is the mantra which I believe strongly. And I always reward myself that I set small, small goals and I stick to that um, prop with proper planning, then go, new, go to move to another goals. So that's how I motivate myself and reward myself. So, which would not only encourage me for achieving goals. So, uh, that is the one which uh, I believe. And one more thing, 
um, when it comes to uh, setting resolution means maybe we can think of uh, resolution it should not last for a very long time maybe a small small resolutions maybe for uh, two months or one month uh, one month two months then what happens you get motivated uh, that that worked me very well i'll set my resolution for one month then yes then uh, so that what happens no you need not to stick for a very long time uh, you will achieve then you will not have that uh, whatever that okay i'm missing that so this is the one i have no idea whether i have said it correctly or not i've tried my best thank you so much smita for this wonderful topic Over thank minutes. you so much to master sushma for telling us that for achieving long term objective if we work on small small goals that will work wonder rather than achieving a long term objective in a um, in a broad way thank you so much sushma over to you tmod thank you toastmaster smita for this beautiful organization of toast table topic master tantamount to the new year's resolution kudos to you and a great applause to you also i thank all the speakers who have participated in it has given their mindset how to make the resolution and follow it a great applause for all the speakers also now i will give the stage to the general evaluator for taking over the evaluation part over to you the general evaluator toastmaster kaushik rajendran thank you very much let's uh, start with the speech evaluation if that's okay with you ms dtm toastmaster pat we can start with the speech evaluation yes we can start because since the second speaker i have sent but still i could make it i could uh, if you want something that's perfectly fine i'll start with this meeting evaluation you can catch it hello we can go ahead okay please go ahead mr general evaluator fellow members honored guest and toastmaster mayu you are on the threshold of a great accomplishment i think soon you must be you will be able to complete your path some are born as leaders some acquire leadership but on some leadership is thrust upon partially you were thrust upon as the president of your club thereby you get the opportunities to get exposed for the leadership building the leadership traits number 1 number 2 you use that opportunity to acquire the leadership traits experimenting experiencing and enjoying the process from your comprehensive narration of presidential leadership journey experience what i have comprehended i am listing it in my own inimitable style it is called eight ways of leadership but the title i am giving is ate because it also sounds like eight now mark my words i am going to list the eight leadership traits which i have understood number 1 is educate ate number 2 communicate ate number 3 dedicate ate then relate delegate participate motivate appreciate this is what i have succinctly understood from your uh, uh, the leadership experience narration please accept my compliments for this accomplishment 
the leadership journey experience began with your plan and action. You were very clear. Number two, vision and takeaways. With the training, mentoring, reaching the area director, divisional director, the district trio, and even the senior members for the council guidance direction to, club, to conduct your club meetings efficiently, effectively, and elegantly. You, how you started with a normal pace and gradually you picked the momentum. But unexpectedly, future is always uncertain. You had to confront a few challenges. XCOM roles, suddenly incomplete or displaced. You had to shoulder, I think one particular XCOM, you had to shoulder the responsibility and your co-members also helped you in that process. It is fantabulous to know that you engaged your club members with a variety of events like uh, debates, then speech marathons, panel discussion, open house session, then how to use virtually uh, speaking, uh, table topics, Olympics, and so many lovely events. You engaged your audience with interest, with intrigue, and with inspiration. And uh, I was really impressed the way how your DCP report was shown. Almost all the goals for the DCP program that had been achieved. And having conducted some special meetings. And also you very frankly saying that it was a roller coaster ride. But I want you to take away that thought because more than the roller coaster, the kind of you know, side effects or real effects which you brought, what your learning should have been much more about that leadership traits journey. So these have been the merits of your speech where you can focus on. Number one, you used slides, but it was almost filled. The pictures were you know, too small and even the font size is too small and you didn't use it, the slideshow uh, mechanism. So in order to help the uh, viewers appreciate and understand, it should have been slideshow and it should be sufficient enough, sufficiently big that people can listen to you at the same time, appreciate the pictures and the words which you used. And you could have used the voice modulation in certain particularly, you know, when uh, confronted by challenges, that kind of you know, depressive voice. And uh, when you achieved something, having done so many different programs, the sense of pride, the sense of possession, the sense of prestige could have been conveyed. In short, the merits are many. The demerits, these two points. If you can afford to in incorporate these few recommendations in your future uh, projects, I'm sure you can proceed with progress, exceed with effectiveness, and succeed with sizzling speeches. Back to the general evaluator. Thank you very much, the DM Pat. So now let's start with the evaluation of the meeting. Evaluation of the meeting um, as a whole. <clears throat> I saw that uh, Adarsh has worked a lot in the WhatsApp group to organize the meeting, uh, pull all of the role players together. The, this club has one too many role players because um, the archiver and listener is usually combined. And then there is the joke master. So naturally, it is a humongous or Herculean challenge to pull together a meeting uh, of this club. And we should definitely congratulate uh, Adarsh on a fantastic job that he did to pull, put together the agenda. Before the meeting started, I saw that a lot of members were on time and there was a bit of chit chat going on, although I felt that it could have been improved. That camaraderie before you start the meeting, it sets the energy for the rest of the meeting. So if that is replete with a lot of greetings and how people were and you check, people are already comfortable starting the meeting. So you, you kind of have an opportunity to hit the ground running rather than everyone warm up with um, uh, at, the, at their own pace. So be proactive. Others, you, the, the, the reins are in your hands. So be proactive. 
and uh, you know initiate the conversation ideally you can leave it to the leave it to the zoom master or the surgeon at arms but if that's not happening you volunteer and start initiating conversation with guests as well as members and ask them how their week was and how what they're looking forward to do over the week and all those things right but put everyone at ease and when the meeting started i felt it started a moment earlier than the scheduled time that definitely goes hand in hand with the energy of milind which i have seen for many years now he is a person you just cannot stop right you'll have to pull him by his scarf his shirt and all together to slow him down so uh, besides that that's not a bad thing by itself but i had to point out that uh, it started a moment earlier uh, milind's energy is what uh, is required for a surgeon at arms because he is the first person on stage and um, that energy percolates through the rest of the meeting and he starts it definitely on a high right he's happy to be there he's happy to see everyone um, the only thing that i would address melin is try to make it a little personal right have a one on one connect now you are broadcasting to an audience whom you may not care, care about uh, on a one on one level but if you can change your dialogues or if you change your sentences in such a way that it is probably appearing as a question to one as a suggestion to another then it makes a lot of connect that would be very nice and uh, an open welcome to all the guests would also be very nice right they will feel connected they will feel belong uh, they feel that they belong to something that they have worked at just add those two things otherwise keep going at the same pace then we had the presiding officer and the toastmaster of the day we played by toastmaster felix benedict um i would like to say the same opinion about uh, uh, melinth what i just gave which is that your manner of speaking is that of broadcasting like you are reading out a script or you are talking to people in general right what people like to feel is that the person on stage is talking to me right it's talking to me on an individual level it's a responsibility of the speaker to make each one of the audience feel connected like that right so you have you can make a little bit of effort to uh, do away with that broadcast style of messaging and talk to people look them in the first thing is of course look them in the eye which is to, you know occasionally look at the camera and then look at each, each of those blocks on this to see that you're connecting with people that's what you can immediately use as the next level because i think a lot of people who walk into the meeting decide on what they're going to reap from this meeting by the first two people who come on stage and so the responsibility that lies with the first two people who come on stage is tremendous you have to connect with a varied and assorted Uh, audience right um, so it is important and imperative that you bring in that style of conversation which makes everyone feel connected which currently is not working so that's something that needs immediate work also a bit of preparation uh, will go a long way in terms of the introductions uh, the introductions were again read uh, it could it can make it personal right by doing a little bit of preparation Uh, and that makes the person uh, welcome and um, cared for when you do a pre good uh, prepared introduction of it so some minor things here and there all through the meeting like uh, 300 million members no <laughs> 300000 members uh, in one of the slides on my or it said club succession plan i think it is club success plan so a little bit of attention to detail also can help and it can go a long way basically the fundamental thing is we should appear and talk as if we care for the people uh, who are here uh, who are here spending their time uh, and they should benefit in some way any any of these mistakes will show that we do not really care about what is happening to them right so we have a need to correct that then came the first speaker mayur i haven't seen you on stage uh, speaking a lot but i do remember you from the very first time i worked in here uh, and you have come a long way you're doing the hpcl now so it's uh, it's a uh, great journey that you have come across I and mean, you have completed and uh, from your presentation it was absolutely clear that you enjoyed your journey as a president there was a lot of 
tips that you had to share with the people and you really took took it to the detail where it actually benefits people right uh, the sad part is that someone who's already been in those shoes or someone who's waiting to get into those shoes will value that so i've been a president so i know exactly what you're talking about adarsh is probably going to step into those shoes next and so he is watching and hanging on to every single word that you say right so my point is it could have been made in a way that it appeals to everyone in the audience right so that you know there are small small takeaways for everyone not just for a toastmasters club's president that how the you package it is each one of those small achievements you can have an analogy of something that happens in your regular life right so it's a takeaway for everyone that one leadership lesson is for everyone so just make bring in that aspect and what your evaluator already pointed out is very accurate um, we all make the mistake of purely using our decks to throw in a lot of words right expecting that either people will read it or that will prompt me to complete my content but it is a visual mode of presentation and it is for visual learners and visual learners don't read right visual learners like to see images so you can never get to a state where there are only images right that will never happen but it is the point is to find a balance between words and images so that it like they say right a picture is worth a thousand words so you leverage the uh, benefit or advantage of visual learning and uh, to your evaluator dtm pact i would say that your <coughs> explanation of how you're going to analyze the speech and what were the merits of the speech were exemplary Uh, that you took most of your time to do that uh, if you had balanced the time a little bit better then you could have finished on time and you could have also included the areas of improvement uh, without overshooting time and then came the toastmaster table topic master uh, who is playing this role for the very first time smitha is that is that right yes for a first time player you did a fantastic job you explained the benefits you explained the rules you explained the timing and you explained how it is going to be played and for quite a few topics you also had connecting thoughts so for a first time player wonderfully done uh, you attempted topics that were a little confusing for people or rather they were too long to be confused right? you can choose simpler topics um, which makes it easy for you to narrate it to people is for people to understand and can have a lot of fun too because in this case what happens is there's a lot of brain work happening right the fun question is completely omitted because people are thinking hard what to say about it. so just bring in that and that is something that come only with practice and time so keep doing this don't uh, badger yourself by saying that i couldn't get it right for the first time you got it very right as you go along make it a lot lighter and try to enjoy the role uh, as you go along with that let's come to my team's reports uh, starting with the timer um, timer pulke could you please share your thank report with us thank you toshmaster uh, kosto so i am ready with my report uh, first coming to speakers uh, toastmaster mayur uh, you have spoken for 15 minutes and 15 seconds kids uh, uh coming to table topics in 9 seconds toastmaster brian 2 minutes and 0 6 uh, seconds uh, dtm pat 2 minutes and 32 seconds dtm Sush uh, toastmaster sushma 1 minute and 50 seconds coming to evaluators uh, dtm pat has spoken for 5 minutes thank you everyone that that was my report back to you general evaluator thank you very much so um, what a couple of things that you can involve include in your report are when did we start it's very important um when we start because predictability gives a lot of confidence to the people who come to the meeting so that meeting will definitely start at 5 and definitely end at 6:30 because if somebody has a program at 6:35 then we and we don't close on time they will not show up right so it's very important to include the start of the time uh, meeting in probably you know somebody before we close can say that we 
uh, stopped back on time. Uh, just add that, and you can also time the first few role players who come in because they are given a time slot, right? In the agenda, they have been given a time. Uh, for a certain terms, two minutes, presiding officer, four minutes, it's given. So you can include them also, not just the speakers. Uh, let's move on to the next report that is from the accounter, and that's going to be presented by Toastmaster Argus. Thank you very much, General Evaluator Kastub. So my job as the accounter is here. I think this is the part of the show that a lot of people don't enjoy because I'm going to expose you for all the crutch words you used along the show. But hey, that's exactly what all of us have to deal with. We have to deal with it. So let me start with the essay for today. That is TTM Mellon. He had no crutch words whatsoever. He has almost mastered the art of not using any crutch words. And that is through successful bosses. And that is through vehement personality and everything that he did personified what I expect to see from the people when it comes to using lesser crutch words during the course of a meeting. Toastmaster Joseph used very few crutch words. The only crutch word that he used during the show was ah, and he only used it a couple of times. I'm pretty confident they'd be able to work on that. I have no suggestions there. Toastmaster Vandana had no crutch words whatsoever. It's almost like she knew what she wanted to talk about, or maybe she had prepared for it in advance. But regardless, she'd done a wonderful job in terms of not using any crutch words. And then Toastmaster Kaustub, the general evaluator, was absolutely brilliant at the start, but then he started using a few crutch words. It's probably because Kaustub, I think you had a lot of content. I think you had a lot to talk about. And I think you had very little time, I believe. I'm not sure. But he went ahead and used a few crutch words. And the one crutch word that he used was ah, uh, and he used it around five times. I'm sure you'd be able to reduce it by reducing your content or probably by reducing your urge to speak more. Toastmaster Perkett, as a timer, you had no crutch words whatsoever. As part of your report, I think you only used R twice. And while introducing yourself as the timer, I don't think you used any crutch words whatsoever. As for Toastmaster Rohita, well, I'm here to listen to from her. I'm here to listen to her. So I'm not going to present my report on that just yet. Toastmaster Shishma, I think you started your table topic by using the word so. So that's actually a big no. Try not using the word so. Just take a pause and start with the story. Start with what you want to talk about. Toastmaster Mayur, by the way, Toastmaster Shishma, you only used ah uh, about four times. You used so once and you used and once. And that's pretty much it. And as for Toastmaster Mayur, I think you had a very long speech today. So it's all it is almost obvious that you weren't going to escape the wrath of the word ah. Uh. You used it around 20 times, but I'm pretty confident you'll be able to use it by taking a long breath, a long and deep breath might actually help you. And I think there were times where you coughed a bit. Maybe that's because it was something that happens. But there are times where we actually cough, although we don't intend to do it. And that's probably because we are speaking too much. Or we take a few breaths that we're not supposed to take when we talk. So that's something that you could probably avoid by reducing or reducing the urge to speak. You can just reduce the urge to speak. You can just take a pause and you can move to the next step. As for DTM Pat, you had no crutch words whatsoever. So congratulations on that. Toastmaster Smitha, you only had three hours. And that's absolutely brilliant because you've only been a Toastmaster I don't know for how long, only a couple of weeks, I believe, you've been absolutely brilliant. And as for the table topic speakers, aside from Toastmaster Shishma, I had nobody that used crutch words. So that was absolutely brilliant. And I feel absolutely happy that knowing that a lot of people use very few crutch words. So on that note, I'd like to hand it back to our general evaluator today, Toastmaster Kalsa. Uh, thank you very much. Before I call the Gramini, let me use the word of the day, <laughs> quite vehemently played. Um, and an exhaustive report. Now let's move on to the grammarian who will present the report. Uh, that would be Toastmaster Rohita. So thank you very much, G. May I have the the rights to share screen? I'll just share the grammarian. Yes, yeah. okay, thank you. To present the grammarian report, uh, to start with, it was an extremely enriching meeting where I was able uh, to note down how many uh, different words from the English language.
to start with, I'll uh, just run through uh, from how we began with our. Uh, just, okay, just hold on this minute. I think I presume Toastmaster Rohita has left the meeting. So we'll probably wait for a couple of minutes until she's back. In that case, let's uh, move on to the next uh, report, uh, which is from the listener. That's not a report. Yeah, it's going to be for an activity. I hope that's what it is. Um, let's go over to Toastmaster Sushma. Thank you, Toastmaster Kausto. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Are you all ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me start with who makes someone happy according to Munish Gupta? What makes what makes someone happy according to Munish Gupta? He has quoted many things, he has mentioned many things. Uh, what makes someone happy? So can anyone mention one thing? Get socialized. Mm, yes. And uh, we all know one thing uh, which very well uh, known uh, thing. What to help, to help yes. others. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Applause Toastmaster Smita. Yes. What is the mantra for sticking resolution as per um, DTM path? One mantra he has uh, suggested for all of us. Any one of that. Mm, okay, I would just mention smart. It is the smart. For that, he has given the abbreviations. Very, um, very impressive to, one. That to is be, to be happy. To be happy. Yes, well, the, the abbreviations also, like for uh, M means what? A means what he has mentioned very clearly. Uh, so according to um, DTM path, what is M means in, in smart? M means what What was meant uh, M means? Okay, anyone? Measurable. Yes, measurable. Yes, moving on to another one. Slow and steady wins the race. What was the opinion uh, by DTM uh, Milind? What was the explanation he has given? Just in a small way, he just uh, mentioned um, very simple, in a simple way he has mentioned for... Um, you need to be more faster rather than uh, slow. Yes, Smita. Applause for Smita. Smita, you are very attentive. <laughs> One of the vision our first speaker Toastmaster mentioned one of the vision in order to be a good leader. So he has mentioned many things. Um, one of the vision, what was that? Being a good leader, you need to have a good vision in order to be a good leader. To make others learn, to make others learn. Is yes, that was also one thing and be open to challenges. Yes, of course, being a leader, you have to take more responsibility on your shoulder and take new initiative. Yes. Who are the mentors for uh, Toastmaster? Mayur, one of the mentor. Many mentors were there. He has mentioned many mentors. One of the mentor can someone... Uh, can someone say one of the mentor? Yes, our club members. Yeah, I mean, more than one person present is Malay. <laughs> yes, Toastmaster comes to. So, you want more questions? This is my report. Over to you, General Evaluator, Toastmaster comes to. 
Thank you very much, Toastmaster Shri. So, it was the first time I um, have seen the listener ask questions from the table topic speakers as well. So, that's, that's very nicely done. Uh, we have the grammarian back with us. So, let's go back to Toastmaster Rohita for her report. Thank you very much, Ji. Apologies, I got logged out right at that the, and the end moment. So, my sincere apologies. I'll go back to my report. So as I share my screen, it was an enriching uh, session today where I was uh, able to note down many uh, uh, vast use of uh, very enriching words in the English language. Are you all able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. To start with, we had Toastmaster Vandana where she said he boarded the flight, better than saying to take a flight. The word for philanthropist was used. Uh, we tend often to use the word uh, show off, which is a very local influence. Uh, so we could also say rather flamboyant. Uh, to release dopamine again is a, a nice way to say when we get excited or we do things, we do activities which, uh, which release dopamine. To change your propositions was used by Toastmaster Joseph. I'll quickly run through so that I'm uh, able to, to mention many of the words that were used by the speakers today. Uh, to Toastmaster Mayur, when he presented his speech on his journey as a leader at Toastmasters with his club, he, uh, he had a lot of verbs and adjectives that were related to leadership, related to his role. So like to take on responsibility, to take the club to a next level, to prepare a success plan, to address a person one-to-one, -one, like uh, where they were not able to take on a role. To take up bigger roles, we could also use to take up more responsibility, more significant roles. To engage to engage is a nice way to say it, more than to work with them. So the, he used uh, words like to resolve, when you resolve an issue to identify diversity, to build leadership. So as you will look through the, the report, the one in, uh, when we keep saying certain times, certain times, sometimes we can also use a synonym, which could be on several occasions. Uh, when we use the word at last, so at last is sometimes a sign of uh, that, oh, I'm happy it's over at last. But when you want to say something that's more pleasant, you could use the word for finally. So I've just given an alternative to at last can also be finally. The roller coaster ride was also mentioned, which is a nice way to say the ups and downs we have in our journey in our professional or personal life. Uh, a, a, a repeat, I think Toastmaster Smita said, I am repeating. You could just say, I repeat. So you won't need the present continuous in that. To share, uh, again, a nice term used uh, where you share unreasonable expectations by Toastmaster Smita. Uh, we had a nice word. Yeah, I hope I got this right by Toastmaster Brian. He said, uh, Jurassic. I've been rather Jurassic in my. Uh, New Year resolutions. So I did check this on. I believe it comes from the word like Jurassic Park. So it's to have a big, uh, to have some big expectations or to have big dreams. So it could also be like colossal. So he said Jurassic. Uh, DTM Pat uses a lot of interesting acronyms uh, where I tried to catch a few. So again, when we speak in relevance to goal setting, we all would be familiar. We use SMART which is uh, measurable, achievable. So uh, when you explain things in acronym, it also helps people to remember uh, those words better. There was an interesting antithesis used. So antithesis is basically a contrast of words or phrase in the same sentence, where DTM Millen said, uh, slow and steady is an old adage, but now it would be fast and... So me, I, mean, I was also going to add it should be fast and furious. So th that was an antithesis in the sentence. Slip up means to make a careless error, just to clarify where Smita was asking. So when we slip up is when we make an error. We, uh, uh, Toastmaster Joseph, uh, he also uses a lot of enrich words uh, where he said tantamount. Tantamount is equivalent. And uh, we had DTM Pat say inimitable. That means in my unique way. So in his unique way. 
Uh, fantabulous is again a way to say excellent, wonderful. There was a sense of euphemism in when DTM Pat was evaluating the speech that was made today, where he, he tried to make what he wanted to say on the correction or the improvement in a more pleasant way. So that is euphemism. And uh, I think Toastmaster Adarsh, uh, he used escape the wrath uh, to uh, come many times when he comes up with his report. So he said,